Thank you so much, Steph. As COVID-19 cases surge in the GTHA and Toronto and Peel's lockdowns are actually scheduled to end on Monday, Premier Ford is considering further restrictions, although no decisions have been made yet. Uh, the worst thing we could do is rush out there and make a, a snap decision uh, in, in, in a heartbeat. We have to make sure if we do make this decision, uh, is it going to be uh, two weeks? Is it going to be three weeks? Is it going to be 28 days for a full cycle? The Premier says other than imposing a curfew, nothing is off the table. And while Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. David Williams, has not released details, uh, that he does say these recommendations he'll be looking at to curb the rise in cases. It could include tighter restrictions in areas that are locked down or moving into more of the GTA into that gray zone. One piece of information that we are just getting right now, uh, Premier Ford just tweeting that they are convening an emergency meeting with Minister Elliott, Dr. Williams and Ontario's hospital leaders to discuss the trends and again reiterating that anything, everything is on the table. We will tell you about the Ontario Hospital Association. They are recommending a four week lockdown in every red zone that has a rate of 40 infections per 100,000 in a population. So it would impact a lot of southern Ontario and hospitals continue to struggle with the surge. So again, we'll continue to follow all of this throughout the morning and through the day on citynews.ca. Meanwhile, the numbers here, Ontario setting another single day record. The province reporting 2,432 new cases and 23 deaths. This is the third day in a row where cases have been over 2,000 and the majority again coming from Toronto. Toronto with 794 new cases, Peel with 434. South of the border, though, we are getting some big news here for the U.S. as they get ready to approve a second COVID vaccine. That emergency approval, it could come down today. And it comes after an advisory panel for the FDA voted 20 to 0 in favor of the vaccine, saying the benefits outweighed the risk. Earlier this week, regulators found the Moderna vaccine to be 94.1% effective. Canada expecting to get 168,000 doses of that vaccine by the end of the year. However, it still needs Health Canada approval. Well, this is significant. Some of Canada's largest companies are set to begin a pilot project to screen employees for COVID-19 before they enter the office. There are 12 companies in the rapid screening consortium, including... Rogers, who we are owned by, Air Canada, Loblaws, Magna, and Scotiabank. They're going to be using a rapid COVID screening test twice a week on volunteer employees before they enter the workforce, with the results coming within 15 minutes. The goal is to make people feel safer. The project, spearheaded by Creative Destruction Lab at Rotman at the University of Toronto, and the trial begins soon, December the 28th. So today, the last day of school for many children before the holiday break. And of course, there is a chance kids will not be going back to in-person learning. Students being reminded here, make sure you take home all the items you need from school today in case those classes potentially move to online in the new year. The province told school boards to prepare for the possibility but has not clearly stated whether in-class learning will be shut down in January. So obviously something that we will continue to watch here should there be developments. Now, the pandemic continues to wreak havoc on the City of Toronto's kids programs. Officials have now announced the cancellation of all holiday camps and winter instructional programs. Over 700 people had signed up for camps that were supposed to begin next week, coinciding with school break. The city will automatically refund anyone who may have signed up. The city did run some camps in the summer, but with the dramatic rise in COVID cases, it deemed winter programs unsafe. All right, let's get to our streets now. A man is in critical condition in hospital after a shooting in Brampton. Peel police responded to this call around 10.30 last night at a home on Scott Street. This is near Queen and Main. The victim, believed to be in his 20s, was without vital signs when emergency crews arrived, but was revived, rushed to hospital, a trauma center here in Toronto, with life-threatening injuries. It is in the basement apartment within a residence here in the area of Church and Scott Street in Brampton. There is other people that were present uh, and they left before we arrived and we would ask if any witnesses to the incident or were in the area may have seen something unusual. Please contact the Peel Regional Police. So far there has been no arrest and no further information on the victim has been released. 
Toronto police investigating two separate pedestrian fatalities in one day, one involving a worker on a construction site. That worker was struck by a truck on Clonmore Drive, which is near Queensbury Avenue near Warden and Danforth, around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. The worker, believed to be in his 40s, was holding a stop sign at the time. He was rushed to hospital but died from his injuries. The Ministry of Labour is now investigating. In the second fatality, a 44-year-old man was struck and killed by a turning transport truck just before noon near Lawrence and Birchmount. So far, no charges have been laid in either case.